Hello, everyone. My name is Jeff Taylor. I'm the principal of Gordon Junior High School. On May 21st of this year, we conducted a parent orientation night for all of our incoming sixth graders. And knowing that a number of folks may not have had the opportunity to join us that evening, I thought it best to record a narrative of the presentation so that folks who weren't able to see it could get this information. But then also folks that did have an opportunity to join us on that evening can uh, have another place to go to get some of this information as well. So this is the presentation that was presented on May 21st, 2015. As I explained to the folks that were in attendance, why are we here tonight? The reason for a presentation such as this is that it's one piece of a comprehensive transition plan. A transition plan that began probably back in December with our sixth grade teachers doing a fantastic job at sending up the course requests for all of the incoming seventh graders. Uh, these requests were what level was most appropriate for math, science, social studies, English, as well as what support classes of any students needed built into their schedule. Our guidance staff here has been working to make sure that those schedule, uh, those course requests are in our system, ready to go. Then what we did is we just the other day concluded our sixth grade tours. We had a separate day for each of our uh, sixth grade students to come in, join us, and we had a really awesome group of seventh and eighth graders uh, available as tour guides to walk them around the building, bring them into different classrooms, expose them to different programs that are here at Gordon, and answer any questions that they had. It was a very successful uh, piece of our transition. This presentation is the third piece, the parent orientation. Also happening concurrently is the SRO, our school resource officer, visiting the schools, elementary schools, explaining what his role is here at Gordon Junior High School and answering any questions that the students may have. Then what we do is for two nights in August, tentatively scheduled for August 24th and August 25th, we open the school and we invite all of our incoming seventh graders to have an opportunity to get uh, their schedule, their room numbers, their homeroom number, their locker assignments, uh, their locker combinations, and we invite the families to join the students on a self-guided tour of the building and uh, checking out to see where all the classes are and to make sure that if there's any corrections that need to be made last minute on the schedule, we get that done prior to the first day of school, which the first day of school, which is currently scheduled for September 2nd, is only for seventh grade students. And the eighth graders do not join them until the next day. And on that first day of school, hopefully a lot of the bugs have been worked out from those two August orientation nights. And uh, the kids will have a first day of school just for them. And then usually about three weeks into the school year is open house night. And that's a great opportunity. We encourage everybody to attend that, to meet the teachers that have been beginning to build rapport with the students within the first few weeks of school. So as I explained on May 21st to the parents in attendance, as you can see, this is a pretty comprehensive transition plan. Uh, transition between grade six and seven is something that is, we take very seriously. It's something that uh, if it's gonna be done right, we have one chance to, to really make a, a positive a first impression. And uh, I hope you can see from this uh, we really uh, do our best due diligence to make sure that that's a smooth transition. A little bit about the school structure, who's who. I'm Jeff Taylor, principal of Gordon Junior High School. Um, our school has one assistant principal. Uh, we have an acting assistant principal, Mrs. Fielding, uh, who has been, a, you know, who is a retired administrator from Warwick School. She spent her career in Warwick, uh, and she is a fantastic asset. She joins us through the end of this year. A number of the students on the tour had an opportunity to meet her, and she explained a little bit about what the assistant principal does uh, here at Gordon Junior High School. And then next year, we're actually in the process currently of working to fill that, that position on a permanent basis uh, with someone. Uh, our school resource officer, our SRO, who's been conducting those visits to the elementary school, is Officer Nelson Carrero. Um, the SRO, this is the second year where Warwick has placed an SRO, a police officer from the Warwick Police Department, uh, at the junior high school level. Officer Carrero 
travels from the three uh, between the three junior high schools. It is a phenomenal asset. It's a great um, connection that we have between the community, various community organizations, and amongst the different schools. So that's worked out very, very well. The department chairs, we have a structure where the department chairs of Veterans High School, also the department chairs of Gordon Junior High School, and uh, that helps the collaboration between the, the levels, especially uh, very helpful when the students uh, are transitioning between 8th grade and ninth grade. Uh, each of our departments does have a dedicated department chair. And our guidance staff, you know, as I mentioned uh, numerous times, uh, I'm you know, certainly disclaiming any bias that I have, but I believe that we have really the best guidance department in the entire district. Uh, our two guidance counselors, Mrs. Zimber and Mrs. Christensen, uh, under the department chair of Mrs. Sylvan, with the support of the guidance secretary, Ms. Moore, do a fantastic job for our students here at Gordon and Fortunately, all the students that have gone through the school on the tours, which is just about every incoming seventh grader at this point, have had the opportunity to meet those key people. Uh, very, very important assets to the school. Our school structure currently has five academic teams, two seventh grade teams, two eighth grade teams. We have one split seventh, eighth grade team. Uh, next year, it looks like we will have four academic teams, two seventh grade, two eighth grade teams. Um, our, even though our split team has both 7th and 8th grade students on it, there is no point in the, the student schedule whatsoever where 7th graders take a class with 8th graders. That split team doesn't mean those kids are combined. It means that they have a couple sections of 7th grade and a couple sections separate of 8th grade students. Also, in addition to our academic teams, we have our non-core classes that are also part of the student schedule. Tech Ed, Music, Foreign Language, Physical Education, Health Class, uh, Math Lab Class, the English Lab Class, the Literacy Class. Those classes help round off our uh, child schedule here. Technology, we're very proud of a lot of the technology enhancements that have happened here at Gordon over the last few years. Um, we do have Tech Ed Labs. Uh, in seventh grade, students take a drafting course and that's uh, fully populated with state-of-the-art computers and a really great program to help students with graphic design. Um, we also have uh, a general purpose computer lab, but in addition to that, we also, for our math lab program, have dedicated computers in the math lab room. A new initiative within the city of Warwick has been a push for Chromebooks, Google Chromebooks. Uh, we currently have five Google Chromebook carts and those are available for teacher use, and it's great to see that just about every day, all five carts are out in the classrooms, and students are using uh, them on a regular basis. Uh, wireless initiative, fortunately, through grant funding from the state of Rhode Island, uh, last year, all the schools in Warwick were given wireless, uh, and now there's a second round of the grant funding that will help make the building completely wireless. The only thing that was left off in the first phase or some of the uh, spaces like cafeterias that weren't made to be wireless, but now with this second round, uh, we will actually have complete wireless in the entire building, but as we currently speak, there's wireless uh, in all the classrooms and all the different labs. Then our library, our library has both the main portion of the library as well as an adjacent quiet room, and between the two spaces are 18 computers, but our library media specialist also incorporates the Chromebooks in her instruction as well. So there's uh, an abundance of technology going on throughout the building. Something that's not on this slide has been uh, some great uh, improvements in our tech ed uh, technology. We also have here at Gordon, brand new this year, a three-dimensional printer, which is fantastic to have the students work on a two-dimensional design on the computer and see it come to life in a three-dimensional print. We also have a three-dimensional scanner as well. So those are some really neat tech tools that we have and we're always looking for opportunities to expand that and get better. We have a number of student activities. One of the neat things about the middle level is that there's more opportunities for kids to get more involved. Uh, we do have theme dances, usually on a monthly basis. Uh, we have a fantastic student activities coordinator, Mrs. McDonald. She's an English teacher here in Gordon. And she does a tremendous job of putting together some really great events for the kids. So there's theme dances that range all the way from a winter ball to a Mardi Gras theme to a 
Halloween theme. So those are some fun events to look forward to. Also, movie night. The, uh, the PTO usually does a few movie nights throughout the year. Just gives the students an opportunity to take a Friday evening and have a supervised activity uh, that they can get involved with. Uh, we do have a, an abundance of field trips. Uh, being teamed at the middle level, teams do a really nice job of scheduling field trips uh, for their students and, uh, and give them some opportunities that uh, would be difficult to replicate while in the, in the walls of the school. Uh, we also have an eighth grade uh, DC trip. That's something that more information will come out throughout the seventh grade year to get uh, some excitement for the, the DC trip while in eighth grade. We also have some clubs here, student council, debate, mock trial, chess, recycle club, an anti-bullying club, a yearbook club. Uh, every year there's some new ideas where we add a few different clubs. Some of these that are on this list may not have enough students to uh, to take off next year, but there's always usually uh, you know seven or eight different clubs that students can be a part of. And we really encourage part participation in all of these activities. As we know in high school, um, that participation uh, is, is even more beneficial and it's nice to get the students into the mindset of participating in different things. And the middle level is a great place to do that. We do have an active uh, PTO. And uh, the PTO, as I mentioned on the prior slide, uh, will host events throughout the school, usually a movie night. But they do a lot for the students and for the faculty and staff here at Brooklyn. Um, it's, it's no surprise when they're able to fund a small project that's going on within the school. Uh, it's great when they're able to uh, participate and help out support a field day or a school-wide event. But in order to do that, it needs support. And so we, we certainly encourage all of our families to, to get involved if possible. Uh, membership at the PTO, the more folks we have involved, the, the more we're able to do for the school and for the students. Um, the PTO does conduct a, a fundraiser or two throughout the year to help raise funds for the PTO, again, just putting it back into student programming. And uh, that's something that I strongly encourage folks to take a look at. And there'll be more information formally to come, uh, especially those August orientation nights on the, the just to give folks an idea of what the first day of school looks like, as I mentioned, the first day of school is September 2nd. Uh, what we've been telling the students as they've been touring the schools what to bring, uh, two pocket folder is, uh, is a good idea. There'll be a lot of handouts on that first day of school, and so a two pocket folder to organize that is helpful. Uh, also something to write with, pen and pencil, uh, and also something to write on, notebook or paper. Uh, also students should bring lunch or lunch money. There's always a question about students that were on free and reduced lunch last year. If they're on free and reduced lunch from the prior year, that does carry over through the first month of school. And then new paperwork will have to be submitted. But if a student was on free or reduced lunch and has that number from the school department, that will still work within our system. So uh, that's just a point to keep in mind. Um, what we tell students not to worry about on the first day of school as far as materials is any type of binders, um, especially uh, as teams, usually vary a little bit on what they expect students to have for organizational purposes for their classes. Some teams prefer one larger binder in which all of the subjects are in. Other teams prefer smaller binders for each of the subject areas. So whereas folks certainly like to take advantage of summer sales, school supplies, Stocking up on things like pen and pencils, notebooks and paper, and folders are a great idea. I, we do encourage folks uh, not to uh, go down the direction of the binder quite yet until that gets teased out on the first day of school when the supply list comes out. That's just a tip on, on purchasing the school supplies. What do the kids do on the first day of school? The very first thing is gather on the lawn unless it's inclement weather, and then the students will gather in the cafeteria. We'll corral everybody into the auditorium, and we will read off the homeroom lists. Fortunately, if the students did come to one of those two August orientation nights, they already have an idea of what homeroom they're in, unless a schedule change was needed to be made in that final week of the summertime. They'll listen for their name to be called, and their homeroom teacher, as well as some other teachers that will be helping in that homeroom, will escort the students to the homeroom and then help their day begin. We have an extended homeroom period on that first day, a lot of information, a lot of paperwork, 
and, uh, and we'll get the students up to speed. And then they travel to their classes for an abbreviated class period just to meet their teachers and get some, some more information. Quick map of our building. Um, and you know, certainly, anytime you move from one facility to a different facility, there's a little apprehension of where uh, things are. We have three floors, a basement, a main level, and a top floor. And our building is a U-shape. Uh, so as we tell the students during the tours, uh, they can only go so far down one end of the U before they have to turn around and walk back. You'll notice on the left-hand side of all of the floors are the even numbers. On the right-hand side are all the odd numbers. And, um, and so this map has already been provided to students for their tours. But uh, this is just uh, another copy of that um, in case folks wanted to take a look at this. We have a middle school schedule. What that looks like is uh, we have a, a seven period day. We have a six day schedule, ABC, DEF, and on each day we have seven periods. Unlike a traditional high school schedule where a period might drop each day, we do not have that. All seven periods that the student has meets each day. What you'll notice is up here at the top, a day begins with period one. The way that we help the students with this, especially at the start of school, is the letter A is the first letter in the alphabet. So A day, we begin with letter one. The schedule follows one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The next day, letter B, a B day, begins with a period two. Letter B is the second letter in the alphabet. The schedule runs two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. And that continues throughout the six days. There's no correlation between the days of the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and the letter day. The very first day of school on September 2nd, if it's a Wednesday, will be an A day. The second day of school, that Thursday, is a B day. Friday is a C day. And then that following Tuesday, because of the Monday holiday, is a D day. So again, there's no correlation between the days of the week and the letter day. We begin the school year on an A day. And 180 days later, we end on whatever letter day that is. And so this is an example of how the schedule rotates. Um, just a note here, uh, the second semester, the F day does modify to begin with period seven instead of period six. And that's just to give period seven an opportunity, an opportunity to meet first. Thinking behind this and the philosophy behind a rotating schedule is rather than have the same class at the same time every single day, uh, the rotation helps to place that class period at a different time. So for an example, if a student uh, tends to be a little uh, more groggy in the morning uh, and a little more exhausted, rather than have math every period of, of every first period throughout each of the days, by rotating it through the schedule, say if the student had math period one, they would have math on A day first, then last on B, and you can see how the ones march down throughout the schedule. So that's just an example of a rotating schedule. You'll see there's a locker time positioned about midway through the day. That's one of three times that students are permitted to go to their locker. The first is during homeroom. The second is during this locker break at 1035. And then the last is at the end of the day to put away anything they don't need and, and certainly take what they do need to complete the homework. This locker break in the middle is very important because we don't want the students to have to carry or worry about seven periods worth of materials. We break it up you know, uh, with half the materials on one side of the locker break, about half of the materials on the second side. Uh, students are permitted to have a backpack to and from school, but they're required to leave their backpack in their locker. Uh, and that's just due to the fact that we don't have uh, the space within the classrooms and clutter the hallways and present safety concern uh, in between the rows of desks in the classroom if every student had a backpack. Uh, and then fortunately with the locker breaks the way it is, they just need to carry a few periods worth of materials with them. So that helps to explain hopefully a little bit about our schedule and a little bit about the locker breaks as well. How are the schedules made? Essentially what happens, as I mentioned back in December, the cost requests come up from the sixth grade teachers. They're plugged into our Aspen student information system. And then the uh, non-core classes are plugged in as well. There's a period of time there where, um, as you recall, there was a sheet that went home. 
uh, looking at if there was a foreign language request, certainly uh, students might be eligible to take a foreign language, so they selected Spanish, French, or Italian. Uh, also, students are required to take a music class, uh, so whether they were in band, chorus, or general music. So there are some choices that are incorporated, and then we take all of that information, uh, make sure it's all in our student information system, and then that's where I begin doing my work starting a few months ago, uh, building the schedule, ensuring that the right offerings are scheduled at the right time so that a child does have the option to take that French class and that band class and the support class if it's needed and make sure that all those options are available in the schedule uh, so that there's not overlapping that would prohibit a child from getting the schedule that they need and then certainly the schedule that they want. So uh, we, I do a lot of, I uh, spend a lot of time, as you might imagine, working the master schedule. And then at around now, we're doing runs of the master schedule, which means it drops kids into uh, tentative schedules. And then I make adjustments on the periods if I notice that there's a little bit uh, too many in one section and I have to do a little jockeying around to make that a little smoother. So that's a process that, like I said, began about two months ago and is, is one of my major lifts throughout that period all the way through the summer to make this as smooth as possible. Department nights, the structure here at the junior high school is each night, excluding Friday, we have late buses available. Late buses uh, pick the students up usually around 3.30 each day. School gets out at 2.20. Department nights or after school activities begin immediately thereafter and end at approximately 3.10 or 3.15 where the late bus will pick students up, like I mentioned, at about 3.20. And this is a schedule for next year's department. And what this means is that students can stay for math with their math teacher on Monday, as well as applied arts, physical education, or health. Tuesday is their English literacy, foreign language. Wednesday, the science, music, teachers stay. Thursday, social studies, the special educators, and the library uh, media center is available after school. Does this change every now and then? Yes, but that would be done through a teacher announcement made to the class, oftentimes over our PA system. If through a personal conflict or obligation, a teacher needs to change, you know, a math teacher may need to change their Monday department night to a Wednesday for a given week. That would usually be published, like I mentioned, over the PA system or to the students directly in class. But for the most part, this is the schedule of our department nights. We encourage students to attend department night for many reasons. One could be because they just need some extra help. Another might be because they're looking to make up a quiz or a test that they missed in class if they were absent on a given day. Uh, we do ask that the students have a reason uh, why they're staying for department night because uh, we are trying to make sure that it's not just to hang out because we don't want to take away any time dedicated to the students who are there for an academic purpose. So it's very common that as department night begins, the teacher will kind of triage everybody and why they're there. Uh, and then group the kids accordingly, those that are making something up, those that need help. And, uh, and so we do ask that the students have a reason uh, for being at department night so that, they're, uh, so that they can be accommodated with whatever that need is. A couple of uh, bits of important information. Uh, being a middle school schedule, we do have team common planning time. Each team has a period, again, rotates as any class would throughout the schedule, but that allows for parent conferences to be done in, in an efficient way with the entire team. So if you're looking to have a meeting with a particular teacher, oftentimes we'll advise to meet with the entire team so you're able to get a, a feel for how the child's performing in all of the core classes. Our guidance office, specifically Ms. Moore, our guidance secretary, will set up uh, meetings upon request. The guidance office number there is 734-3356. However, our main line is 734-3350, and feel free to call that number, and we'll be more than happy to transfer you the guidance to set up a conference with the teachers if at any point in time you'd like to, like to have that option. Uh, interim reports, in addition to the four report cards that come out at the end of each quarter, about midway through each quarter, there's an interim report, which is a progress report that helps to, to give you an idea of how your students are doing uh, in their classes at a midpoint where there's hopefully some, still some time where they can bring up grades. So that's just another mechanism of communication. Also here at Gordon, a number of teachers use an online platform for communication. Many use Aspen. 
uh, the Yasmin Student Information System parent portal uh, to communicate and post their grades, while others use another grading system, another program uh, that has similar features. Uh, so oftentimes, you might already have an idea of how well your students are doing in a particular class just by having the opportunity to log on at your own convenience to see um, how, the, how the grades are going to the classroom. We also provide each student with an agenda that's given to them on the first day of school. It's, uh, it's, it's provided each student gets one agenda. If at any time their agenda gets dest destroyed or they lose it, um, we, they need to get another agenda. We do have those available for sale in the main office. Um, the agenda tool is very beneficial to help keep kids organized, especially now that they have so many different classes and so many different teachers. Uh, the agenda has the front section with general information. A lot of what I'm covering in this presentation is incorporated into the front few pages of the agenda. But after that, there's a, a calendar uh, for each day that has the subject areas listed, and it's where students can write what their homework is, what their projects are. If there's no homework, hopefully they get into a routine of writing no homework. And you're able to see, yes, there's no homework in a particular uh, given period on a, on a particular day. Um, it's a great communication tool between parents and teachers, and, uh, and our teachers do a really nice job uh, upon your request, if you would prefer, uh, that at the end of the period, if your child brings the agenda up to the teacher, uh, he or she is more than happy to initial the fact the homework is written correctly in there. Also, if there's no homework and the child writes no homework, they can initial that, again, upon request, if that's something that you're interested in. If you think it would help with, with the child's organization, they can uh, help accommodate that initially for no homework so you know that truly there's no homework that night. Um, if you want to contact teachers, we all have email addresses. Uh, currently, our email system is first class and it has each of our last names, uh, first initials, so in my case, Taylor J, T A Y L O R J, at wallacespoon.org. We're shifting to the Google platform for next year. So whereas all of our current email addresses will continue to be forwarded to us, so if you have our, us on contact already because another one of your children came through here this year or last year, that's still good. That will still get to us. But they're shifting over to our first name, dot last name at wallowschools.org. An example there, sherry.sylvan at wallowschools.org. And as I mentioned earlier, she's our guidance department chair. Here at Gordon, we're very fortunate that we have a, a, not just a, a very dedicated and top-notch team of educators, but also a number of folks in our support services. As I mentioned, our guidance counselors, Mrs. Inbert and Mrs. Christensen, uh, do a phenomenal job with our students. We also have a school psychologist, um, Ms. Sherry Walsh. Uh, our school social worker is Allie Walsh. And we have a school nurse, uh, Mary Taji. And we have a student assistance counselor, Amanda Slope. Uh, this group of individuals um, is a core group of folks that are really dedicated in making sure that if the students have any uh, particular special needs whatsoever, that we're able to respond and help uh, both on the school front and the home front if needed. And all of these individuals can be reached through our main line, 734-3350. Again, our incoming seventh grade orientations, August 24th and August 25th. I put tentative. Um, that's just in case if anything were to change on those dates. I don't foresee any reason why those dates would change. But again, the 24th and the 25th, and they usually run from about 6.30 to 7.45. We'll communicate that as soon as the um, district transitions all of the contact information from the sixth grade to seventh grade. And I'm able to now do the... Um, robocalls that you might be getting still from your sixth grade uh, principals, then I'll be able to put out the, the more particular information. But if you're tentatively scheduling, it's the 24th, 25th, usually about 6.30 in the evening. Um, we do approximately 85% of our incoming students have attended historically over the last few years. We'd love to get that to be 100%, but we fully understand that there might be conflict, folks might be away. And it's common for some students to come to both. What we usually see is they, on the 24th, come to the check-in table, get that information that I mentioned earlier, and then tour the building, and then just feel comfortable doing a one more tour 
on their own the next night. That's fine. It's not a pick one or the other. If you want to visit us on both of those evenings, that's more than fine. Sometimes that extra uh, you know, walk around or that extra test of the locker uh, is very helpful to uh, help ease any anxieties. So that's, uh, that's what that's about there. And this would be the point in time during the parent presentation where it would answer any questions. Uh, tough to do that through this format. However, um, please do not hesitate whatsoever to call us at the school. Again, 734-3350. Uh, if there's a scheduling question, a placement question, um, you need information on that, our guidance staff is probably best equipped to help you there. Um, that's 734-3356 or our main number and we'll transfer you. If there's any questions for me, please feel free to email me uh, or uh, give us a call here and we can answer those questions uh, from our end. Also, the sixth grade teachers truly are great at helping uh, ease the transition from their end. So any questions you have, if you have a good rapport with the sixth grade teachers, they're oftentimes a great uh, place for an answer as well. So with that, we thank you for, uh, for your time with this and uh, hopefully this presentation uh, helps those that weren't able to attend on May 21st, and even those that did but wanted to see this information again. Take care and have a good